Hi, this is Jonathan. Welcome back from that hike of the Lofoten Islands in Norway. In this section I will show you the route we hiked and our itinerary, including how we got around between the hikes in an attempt to make your life easier when planning to hike the Lofoten Islands yourself. First of all, if you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support by subscribing to my channel as it ultimately enables me to go out and do more of these tricks and videos to share with you. So, to reach Lofoten, we took the ferry from Bodø in Norway to Moskenes. These ferries are available for you both if you are traveling with a vehicle or if you are traveling without one. The ferries are operated by Tori Hatten. You can book and pay to reserve a place on these uh, ferries on their webpage. They also have some spots which you cannot reserve in advance, where it's a first come, first serve basis. So when you arrive at the ferry terminal, you queue up. So if you did not book in advance and the ferry fills up, you will have a higher chance of catching the next ferry as you will be further ahead in the queue. So how do you get to the ferry terminal in Boda? Well, you can either go there by uh, plane, there's an airport nearby, or you can drive there, which we did since I live in Sweden, not too far away. In Moskenes there are camping options as well as car rental options just by the ferry terminal where you will arrive. We took the car to Sörvågen and parked our car just next to the trailhead. The trail went up, up, up and we were welcomed by rain on our first day, so we were completely soaked after our first kilometers. Our initial plan was to summit the northern Munk top, which apparently has a nice panoramic view all over the Lofoten Islands, but, but unfortunately it became very foggy as we got close to the top, so we decided to set up camp nearby instead. There is a cabin by Munkby, but it's locked and you need to pick up a key for it in Sörvågen, which you of course also need to return when you finish your hike. Second day, our initial intention was to summit, summit Hermansdalstinden, which is the tallest peak in the region, and the hike took place between a few lakes, which was really cool, as all of these lakes were situated on different heights. Early on we got some rain again, but also finally some really nice window with good weather. Between these two lakes, uh, one of which is Krokvatnet, we passed a shelter, so we didn't stop to look at it, but you can stay there if you want to. Uh, and on our way to Hermansdals Tinden, we came to an area that was quite steep and very slippery and muddy because it had just been raining throughout the morning. So we didn't see how we could get back up if we hiked down that path with our backpack. So for safety reasons, we decided to skip Hermansdals Tinden and instead hike down to Forsfjord. From Forsfjord we took the ferry to Reine, passing by Vindstad, where additional hikers were picked up. We had not booked the ferry in advance and we could pay with a card in the boat itself. It's important to know, however, that the ferry does not always stop in Forsfjord. If you want to be sure, you have to call the operator and ask for a pickup, which is what we did. Once back in Reine, uh, we took the public bus to Sörvågen. It departs just outside the gas station in Reine. And in Sörvågen, uh, we bought some food, we picked up our car and we went to Å, where we had booked a cabin to stay over the night. We were able to warm ourselves, sleep in proper beds and treat ourselves with a proper meal. That was amazing. On the third day, we spent the morning exploring the town of Åh, which is a small and very picturesque fishing village uh, that I highly recommend visiting. They serve great pastries and coffee in their bakery as well. After spending an hour or two there, we headed back to Reine. We parked our car and we began hiking towards the top of Reinebringen. Reinebringen is one of the by far most popular hikes of the Lofoten Islands. It's easily accessible, it's quite short, it's easy, it's basically you're hiking up a staircase the entire hike. So expect large crowds. When you reach the top, you are rewarded with an amazing view over Reine and its surrounding islands and peaks. Uh, one point, about one and a half kilometers to the top and suitable for beginners. Once finishing hiking in Reinebringen, we felt we still had some energy left, so we set off to start hiking towards Ryten, another popular hike of Lofoten. Ryten and Kvalvika Beach are also famous hiking destinations within Lofoten, so again, expect large crowds, although not as large as for Reinebringen. Both Kvalvika and Ryten have designated parking areas for their respective trailheads. 
As we wanted to do both hikes, we found a perfect spot sitting just between them, where we parked our car and started hiking up towards Rytten. This way, we were able to hike both Rytten and Falvika Beach in a loop, instead of going in back and forth hike, which I prefer because then you always get to explore new areas instead of going back to the same way you've already seen. Day 4, we left our backpacks in the tent, we hiked up the last bit towards Rytten, with this awesome view looking down over Kvalvika and the Atlantic Ocean. After which we hiked down to Kvalvika Beach, picking up our tent and gear along the way and setting up our new camp close to the beach. And at the beach we took a swim. It was not as cold as I was expecting. I'm not sure about the temperature, uh, but maybe something around 15 degrees Celsius. So, so yeah, honestly not too bad. Day number five, last day of the hike, we were craving some real food. We hiked through a pass back to our car, drove back to Reine, to a restaurant called Anita's Seafood, where we had their godlike fish burger, which concluded our trip nicely and that I highly recommend trying out. From Moskines, uh, we then proceeded taking the ferry back to Buda to travel back home. So, to summarize this trek, weather-wise the conditions varied a lot and changed very often throughout the same days, so make sure to prepare for that. There's also the phenomenon known as ocean fog, it means a lot of fog rolling in over the Lofoten Islands, which is almost always present during the mornings as the sun becomes stronger, but tends to clear later during the day. Trail-wise there are a lot of trails available. Uh, you can look at maps.me or old trails or, or any other uh, uh, trail app, but I'm happy with our selection. With that said, uh, the trails from Sörbung into Munken and Hermansdals Tinden were not forgiving. Not a single time were there flat grounds in these hikes. So either going very steep uphill or downhill, or being very rocky, sometimes slippery, or moments where you needed to scramble, which can be hard if you're carrying a large backpack or heavy weight. So really try to get your weight down as much as possible if attempting those hikes on your own. This summer, another phenomenon worth mentioning is uh, that the sun does not set in Lofoten. You see the sun grazing the horizon only to come back up again, meaning it never gets really dark. So if you have trouble sleeping, be sure to bring an eye mask or something to cover your face with. So that's it for this time. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support by subscribing to my channel. Um, it enables me to go out and do more of these videos to share with you. And also do not hesitate to give me any feedback on what you liked or didn't like about this video. Uh, please also don't hesitate to ask me any questions you might have around planning for or doing this hike yourselves. I'm very happy to help. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.